Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and this is the State of VR for July 2020, your monthly digest of the most important VR gaming news. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the leaked images of the next Oculus Quest, some recent Steam VR hardware stats, Ready Player 2, Microsoft's Flight Simulator, and a new AAA VR game coming from Rockstar. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. I've been keeping busy playing plenty of VR titles this month, such as Vertigo Remastered on the Valve Index, which I would highly recommend, Five Nights at Freddy's on the Oculus Quest, Dreams on the PSVR, and I even went back to some retro classics on the old Nintendo Virtual Boy. Let me know what VR games you've been enjoying this month in the comments down below. One VR experience that really stood out for me this month is Tempest. It's an immersive live theater experience in virtual reality hosted by The Under Presents. It's available on both the Oculus Quest and Oculus Rift. Now, last month on the State of VR, I talked about enjoying live events in virtual reality, especially as it's almost impossible to experience these in the real world right now. So I was eager to try this new one out. In this experience, you join five other players online with a live actor host who guides you through a 45 minute rendition of Shakespeare's famous tale, The Tempest. You each get assigned a role to play by the host and you learn the story through experiencing it. And it was totally unlike anything else I've ever tried in VR before and it really took me by surprise. The experience is $14.99 in US dollars for a one-off experience and you have to book your slot in advance through the box office in the Under Presents VR app. Now, I understand that this won't be for everyone and that's absolutely fine, but if you like theatre or you just want to try something completely unique in virtual reality, go check out Tempest, which is running live shows up until the end of September. And now let's get into the biggest VR news this month, starting with the leaked images of the next Oculus Quest. Now, please treat everything about this headset as rumor and speculation at this point until we get an official announcement from Oculus themselves. With that said though, I'd be interested in hearing what you think this new headset is going to be called. Do you think it's going to be called the Oculus Quest Lite? Maybe the Oculus Quest Pro or even the Oculus Quest 2? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, I made a whole video on the channel about the first rendered image which was leaked last week, but since then we've had some more images leaked online, including these raw images which suggest that the leak is in fact real. So here's a summary of my thoughts and findings from the images so far. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually quite like the white design of this new headset, and it could be a smart move from Oculus to distinguish itself from the rest of the Oculus lineup, which is gonna be important from a marketing perspective, and it should also help out with customer confusion. The headset features four inside-out tracking cameras on the front plate, although the top two cameras are slightly offset compared to the original Quest, and it's quite possible that the new camera locations could provide a slightly wider tracking volume. The new head strap design is kind of disappointing in my opinion, as it has a hard strap at the front with audio channels built in just like the current Quest, but then an all-material strap at the back, which looks more like an Oculus Go head strap. The rendered images make it look like a rigid strap all round, but the raw images tell a different story. The headset will have to be significantly lighter than the current Quest for this head strap to be effective. Otherwise, we're gonna have the same weight distribution problems all over again. I'm hoping that Oculus provide an alternative option and maybe even offer a pro strap or something similar for those that want a more robust head strap and a better audio solution. Whilst on the subject of audio, it looks like we have stereo microphones, which will be nice for in-game chat. It also has a single 3.5 millimeter audio jack as they've removed the second jack from the other side of the headset. It also has a USB-C connector, which is on its side, which would mean when using Oculus Link, the cable will run straight to the back of the head strap, which makes sense, especially if they include a new clip for cable management in the box. From the images, the headset doesn't feature an external IPD adjustment slider, which is a cause for concern. However, from one of the newer leaked images, it appears that there's space for those lenses to move around inside the headset. There's also a mysterious number two in the middle where the proximity sensor would be, so this could be some new kind of IPD adjustment mechanism, but it's difficult to say right now for sure. The images also show slightly redesigned touch controllers 
which moves the battery door to prevent it from sliding in intensive games, and the design looks much more like the original Oculus Touch controller which shipped with the Rift CV1, which is definitely welcome. I've seen a lot of negativity around this leak and people writing off this device from these images alone, but I would wait to see what's under the hood before being too dismissive, because it could feature a faster processor, wider field of view, faster refresh rate and better optics, which we just can't see from these images. With some of the design choices though, it does seem that this headset will be easier and cheaper to produce, and hopefully these cost savings are passed on to the consumer with a slight reduction in price over the original Quest. If this new Quest uses the same internal specs as the current Quest, my best guess right now is that it will be a $299 headset with an optional Pro Strap accessory. However, if it does have significantly beefed up internals, then I would say it will likely replace the current Quest at $399 US dollars. With the leaked images, we also had a date of the 15th of September, which is likely going to be the announcement date. This would coincide with Oculus Connect 7, as the event generally is held around this time each year. But like I said earlier, this is all speculation at this point, and I also want to reiterate that if you already own a Quest or you've just bought one, you don't need to worry as the headset isn't going to be obsolete and you'll still be able to play the same content available on the Quest Store and enjoy that headset for plenty of time to come. Okay, so moving on but still keeping on the subject of VR hardware, let's move into some Steam VR hardware stats to give us an indication of what are the most popular VR headsets that are being used by Steam users right now compared to the stats that I showed during the state of VR in April 2020. The following stats are for the percentages of overall headsets connected to Steam VR between January 2019 and June 2020, divided into the most popular headset models. As we can see from the numbers compared to the stats provided between October 2018 and March 2020, the biggest shifts in the user base show a 5.7% reduction in Oculus Rift S users, with a 5.9% increase in Oculus Quest users. Now, this would make sense now that the cable included in the box with the Quest works as a link cable and the lack of updates for the Oculus Rift S. We also saw a 2.5% reduction in original Vive users and a 1.9% increase in Valve Index users. I suspect this would have been slightly more had the Valve Index been more readily available over the last few months. The percentage of overall Steam users with a VR headset slightly increased from 1.29% to 1.67%, which is an increase of 0.38%. And I think we definitely need some more killer VR titles to drive headset adoption. And hopefully we'll be getting some more great games announced by the end of this year. Talking about killer VR titles, check out my VR clip of the month this month of my buddy Nathy playing Iron Man on the PSVR. Let's, uh, let's be careful. Ow! <laughs> I can't help but laugh. The delayed reaction is just so priceless. But seriously though, make sure you have plenty of space to swing about in VR as the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself or more importantly, your VR controllers. Okay, so now let's get into some other news and that is that Ernest Klein, the writer of Ready Player One, has a sequel book coming out later this year called Surprise Surprise, Ready Player Two. The original book followed the story of Wade Watts, an unlikely hero who spends most of his days in the freely accessible virtual world known as the Oasis. After the creator of the Oasis, James Halliday, sadly passes away, a competition begins to recover three keys and find an Easter egg in his virtual world. The one who finds the egg will inherit an immense fortune and will have complete control of the Oasis. Of course, chaos ensues and an evil corporation known as IOI who creates virtual reality hardware to access the Oasis wants to take full control of it and monetize it themselves. The original book did incredibly well and when it released back in 2011, it hit the number one spot on the New York Times bestsellers list and remained on that list for over 100 weeks. Of course, later the book was adapted into a movie by Steven Spielberg. Personally, I preferred the book over the movie, there's obviously a lot more going on in the book, and it's a shame that some of the best scenes didn't end up in the movie, like the iconic game of Joust with the Lich King. If you read the book, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
There's an amazing audiobook read by Will Wheaton, which I would highly recommend if you're not into reading books yourself, so you can check out the original story. The original book was obviously a huge inspiration for me to start this YouTube channel, so I'm really looking forward to the sequel, especially now as the technology depicted in the original book is catching up with real life. The sequel, Ready Player 2 book, will be launching on the 24th of November. So now let's talk about some games, starting with Microsoft's Flight Simulator. Because this week, Microsoft announced the release date for their frankly gorgeous looking flight simulator, which will be releasing on the 18th of August. This is a full refresh of the Microsoft Flight Simulator series since the last game's launch over 13 years ago. Throughout the new game's development, the VR flight community have been loud and clear about wanting VR support. And although Microsoft have confirmed VR is a highly requested feature and at the top of their priority list, they've also said that VR won't be supported at launch and haven't given any indication if and when it might be supported in the future. Now, even though I'm not really into flight simulators, I really love the attention to detail in this game and just love the idea of relaxing on a Sunday afternoon and taking a flight to somewhere sunny in a little Cessna or something and just taking in the sights along the way. Along with releasing the game on Xbox and the Windows Store, Microsoft will also be releasing a physical edition of the game which will come on a whopping 10 DVDs, containing 90 gigabytes of game data. This game data contains the world and aircraft delivered by Microsoft, which just saves you from downloading all this data if you happen to have a slow internet connection. However, you'll definitely want a decent internet connection to take full advantage of the game, as details like time of day, weather conditions, and finer terrain detail will all come from real-time data, satellite imagery, and Microsoft's cloud computing Azure technology. They say you can actually see your own house, and possibly even your own car, on your driveway if it was there when the satellite imagery was taken. Completely mind blown. The game will be coming out on the 18th of August, and you can buy the game outright, at $59.99 in US dollars, or you can play it as part of Xbox Game Pass, which is just $4.99 in US dollars a month. Hopefully, we get an update regarding VR support from Microsoft very soon. And the last bit of news this month is that Rockstar are supposedly working on a AAA VR game. Now, this news came from a post on LinkedIn advertising job opportunities for programmers, game designers, and animators to join a company called Video Game Deluxe based in Sydney. These are actually the developers responsible for the VR version of Rockstar's L.A. Noir, which was called L.A. Noir The VR Case Files. In the listing, it stated, Having finished the critically well-received L.A. Noir The VR Case Files, we are now gearing up for a new project, a AAA open-world title in VR for Rockstar. 2020 marks our seventh year of working exclusively for Rockstar in Sydney, and we are excited to be taking on this groundbreaking project. This was quickly spotted and posted on Reddit, and since then the post has been edited to remove the part that says AAA open world title in VR for Rockstar. If you had to guess, what game do you think this would be? I guess as the name suggests it will be an open world game, it's likely going to be GTA or Red Dead Redemption, but just imagine if it was something like Max Payne or even Manhunt. Imagine that in VR, that would certainly stir up the mainstream gaming media. And that is it for the State of VR for July 2020. I hope you enjoyed this recap of the most prominent VR news from this month. And if you did, leave a like and let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you have any feedback on how I can improve the series going forward, feel free to let me know. To keep up to date with all things VR, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.